Welcome to Jiva Yoga Live. I'm Hillary. Today we're going to look at some postures that are really going to help you if you're having any disc problems in your back. These postures are going to help safely strengthen and stretch your hamstrings and show you how to get into some folds without injuring yourself and release some pain. We're going to take a look at a few variations of postures that you can be practicing even if you're having some disc problems, whether it's a herniated disc or a slip disc. It's really important to give yourself the modifications that you need that are going to support your body and not um, add any injury or add any pain to injury that you already have. So to do these postures, we're going to need a few, um, a few props today. Definitely going to want a strap, um, one or two blocks. If you have a bolster, perfect. If you don't have a bolster, you can take some thick blankets and we'll just roll those up um, and use them. It'll be great. So the first thing we're going to work on today is some hamstring stretches. A lot of times when we're experiencing problems with discs, it's actually the result of really tight hamstrings being overstretched, overflexed. Um, and not being quite strong enough or flexible enough to support the mobility of the spine. So before we move into some of the spinal exercises, we're gonna start with some um, hamstring stretches. So the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna need a strap. Go ahead and grab that. And from a nice seated position, taking care of the spine, we don't wanna round it too much, so we'll um, just Grab the backs of the, the legs to support yourself lowering down into a reclined position. And from here, we're going to extend one leg out entirely in front of us, keeping the hip, um, the hip towards the ground, keeping the knee towards the sky and keeping that foot flexed. So we're activating through the extended leg. We're gonna bend the opposite leg. This is gonna be my right leg. Bend the leg into the chest, just enough that you can wrap your strap around the back of the foot. We're gonna be bringing the leg up to the sky, extending it as much as we can, as much as feels comfortable. So go ahead and tuck the shoulder blades underneath the spine. That's impossible. Tuck the shoulder blades closer to the spine. Flex the extended foot, flex the bent leg. And as you inhale, press away from the body with the foot, extend the leg as much as you can, tuck your navel into your spine, and then begin to bring the strap closer to the body, extending through the knee, through the back of the leg, and making sure we're anchoring down through the hips to really feel support and stretch in the back of the leg here. You may even feel it in the groin. And as much as is comfortable, we want to bring the foot closer to the body. If you, may, um, if you don't have a lot of flexibility, you may just be here. You may have your knee bent. We just want to find what feels good, finding safety, not putting any stress on the back of the, um, on the lower back, making sure the back is as attached to the mat as is possible, and you can just hold this here for a few breaths. And when you're ready, you just lower the leg down with the support of the strap. You can switch the strap to the opposite foot this time extending the right leg, bending the left leg, and extend the left leg up to the sky with the hips towards the ground, tucking the navel, finding a nice stretch in the back of the hamstrings, breathe into the stretch, and when you're ready, after a few breaths, simply lower the foot back down with the support of the strap. 
So this is a really good way to strengthen the hamstrings without having to fold to do it. A lot of times we're lengthening the hamstrings when we're in standing forward folds and this puts a lot of um, stress on the lower vertebrae and um, a lot of times that's where we're experiencing our herniated discs and our slip discs. So folding is really not good for it, but it's important that we strengthen the hamstrings. Um, so the next hamstring stretch we'll look at is an alternative to a forward fold. It's still going to be a fold, but we're gonna do it with lots of support and we're gonna wanna use our blanket or bolster or even our, our blocks. So there's options here. We'll bring whatever prop you want to use, go ahead and set it up in front of the body. We're going to be laying the torso onto it. If you're using blocks, you may want to stack two on top of each other. Um, and you just want to go ahead and find a nice, comfortable, wide-legged, um, wide-angle pose. And um, make sure that your toes are remaining flexed, so that helps us protect the tops of the knees and then activate through the tops of the thighs. So our legs are really engaged in this posture. We're sinking the hips down. We're feeling both sit bones connected to the mat. So we're not coming up and away. And our tailbone is tucked in towards the mat. We're gonna inhale the arms up above the head. And as we exhale, we're going to lower the torso forward, bringing the fingertips away from the body. And when we feel um, the upper body begin to fold, that's as much as we want to move forward. We don't want to fold the spine. We want to hinge from the hips. So this is really activating through the backs of the legs. We're thinking about stretching our legs in this posture, not the spine. So when you feel that your spine is about to collapse, that's as far as you need to go in the pose. We can bring the hands towards the earth and allow the torso to relax onto the block, onto the bolster. Release the neck, allow it to relax and really breathe into the backs of the legs, breathe into the hips and press into the heels so that the legs are active. Maybe the heels are even coming off of the ground. Just take a few breaths here. And when you're ready to support yourself, press into the palms, lift the torso, and really avoid rounding out that spine. So this is a really great stretch for strengthening, for lengthening the hamstrings while protecting the lower back. We can put the whatever props you've used aside and we'll move into our next posture, which is going to be really similar to locust pose. It's called crocodile. So we'll come down, um, bring the belly towards the mat, and we're gonna lower the body all the way down, bringing the feet and ankles together at the back of the body, connecting the pelvis to the mat, feeling rooted here. And what we're going to do is simply open the elbows, layer the hands one on top of the other, and bring the forehead to the back of the hands. As you can see, this is a very simple, very easy, very restorative and relaxing posture. But what it does is it opens the diaphragm and allows us to take deeper breaths and as we take a deeper breath, it allows us to expand the muscles, releasing tension in the lower back. So this is a really great posture um, to practice before you're going to bed. Really helps calm the mind and calm the body. You wanna take um, really maybe even five minutes in this posture if you can stand it. Um, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And as you're in the posture, really think about connecting the pelvis, connecting the hips towards the mat, grounding through them, allowing the tailbone to lengthen the spine. And as you breathe into the posture, really feel the breath expand in the lower body.
So stay there as long as you need. And when you're ready, bring the hands beneath the shoulders for our next posture, Cobra Pose. To do this, we'll press into the palms, extend the fingers wide so that we can activate through the entire hand. We're gonna press into our hands and bring the, sh the elbows together behind the body. Think about energetically bringing the elbows closer towards each other. We're gonna lift the chest as we press into the palms and allow the shoulders to come away from the ears. So this is a nice way to strengthen the upper back. It stretches the upper back, it also strengthens it. This is really good for helping any tension that you're having in the lower spine, but also builds muscle which is gonna help strengthen and prevent future pain. So for Cobra, if you want to extend further into Cobra Pose, when you inhale, just press away from the mat, lift the chest, really feel the strength coming from your arms, press into the pelvis, and lower the body down with control using the arms to support you. You can bring your cheek to the mat and extend the arms behind the body to rest in between posts and between each round. And when you're ready to take another round, just bring the hands beneath the shoulders. Bring the shoulders away from the ears. Inhale, press into the palms, lift the chest, lift the gaze. Make sure those elbows stay tucked and lower down. You can take little rounds like baby push-ups here. So good for strengthening the upper body. And when we're strengthening, we're helping to support the entire spine. So after Cobra Pose, you can bring yourself back up into a table to help move through to a seated position. We're gonna take a look at a bridge pose. So to do this pose with support, we're gonna need one block. We can come to a bent knee seated position and go ahead Bring your block out to the side. We want to lower our body down with control, lower the torso towards the mat, however is comfortable for you. Oh, maybe I'll get on the mat. <laughs> so coming down all the way to the mat, knees are um, bent and our heels are close to the tail. We're gonna lift um, the tailbone and place the block just underneath the tailbone. Bring the heels close to the body. You can um, adjust the block to find what feels good. If you want a little more support, you can bring it to its higher setting. If you feel you want even more support, you can turn it again. So finding what feels comfortable for you. This is a posture you're going to rest in. So allow the palms to be open by the side of the body. The shoulder blades are coming towards each other. And we're really breathing into the space between the pelvic points and the space at the tailbone and the lower spine. This is a very restorative posture, so we want to take our time finding ease here and using our breath to expand. Expanding with each inhale and relaxing with each exhale to bring more activation to the posture. You can press into the feet. You can press into the backs of the shoulders. Supported bridge pose. 
And when you're ready to come out of the pose, press into the feet to lift the hips, release the block, and lower the spine down. And lastly, we'll just look at a variation of corpse pose, Shavasana, which is one of the most restorative postures. But some of us still find pain in this posture when we're having trouble with our lower back. So we can support the body by using a blanket or a bolster and bringing it below the knees. If you want even more support, you can use your blocks. You can even put blocks beneath the bolster to raise it even higher. So we'll put our props, whatever we're using to support below the knees, and we'll lower the body down to the mat, extend the legs out, Still, as if we're in a regular Shavasana, we bring the legs a little wider than the hips and we extend the arms away from the body with the palms open face up. And just find what feels good here. Find a position that allows the bottom of the spine to be flush against the mat and allows the hips to feel open and relaxed. By bringing the knees elevated, we help support the lower spine. We help it help support the tailbone towards the mat. So breathing into your Shavasana pose for as long as you want. You might be here five minutes or you might be here 20. Maybe you're gonna take a nap. Just knowing that this is an option for you if it's uncomfortable to be in a regular corpse pose with the knees against the mat, you can always put something underneath them, helps support the lower spine, helps relieve tension from those discs that may be giving you some problems. And to come out of corpse, we can always come into a fetal position and press the body up with the arms. Always giving yourself support is the most important. So I hope these variations have helped you with some ideas of how you can continue your yoga practice safely, supporting your injury and not adding to it. Would you like to dive deeper into today's sequence? Click the link in the description below. You can download the PDF with images and tips to help you get deeper into today's practice. Namaste.